G'day cunts, episode 7, back again, same old shit, I uh, didn't do one last week because I had some dental work done and now I have one of these, so look after your fucking teeth kids, sound like an idiot with that in so I'm going to take that out for the thing, so yeah same as before, honest reviews, no money change in hands, can't buy my influence, and interesting to note, I got some flack from a certain band, or at least a certain band's fans, for giving them some shit. It's funny, it's the hipsters that get offended. Fuck you. On with the show. First up is a two-piece called Terrificus. And the song's called, I filmed myself crying, I threw my phone into the ocean. Bit of a wanky title, bit of a wanky name. The song itself started off fucking great, I got really excited, this riff came in and it was this instantly reminded me of Big Black, and then the vocals kicked in, and it was like I'd gone to McDonald's when I was really hungry, got home with my order in the bag, I opened the bag up, only to find out that the chips hadn't been salted, and instead of my Big Mac, I was stuck with a scabby fillet of fish. This guy, the vocals on this song are fucking just really poor compared to the song. The music's great, the vocals are just tone dead, deaf, off, crappy, didn't do it for me at all. I was really disappointed because the music's great. Um, really old kind of industrial noise punk thing going on with the, with the music, but the vocals were just toilet. Um, I'd give this, musically I'd give it four Al Jorgensen Colossomy bags out of five. Vocals, I'll give it two. And I was really disappointed, so I checked some more of these guys' songs out. And I discovered that the guy singing on this song doesn't sing on the rest. The rest of the songs, the music was still great, but the vocals were really good as well. Um, Terrificus have this really good sound. It's like Steve Albini meets Al Jorgensen meets Christian Lunch. Um, really interesting. I'd really like to check these guys out live. No offense to the guy singing on this particular track, but stick to doing the other stuff because that's good. The vocals on, on that particular song are toilet. On the other songs, really good. Uh, Terrificus. Yeah, worth checking out. I enjoyed them in spite of the vocals on this song. Next up is a band called Can't Even, spelt C-N-T-E-V-N, with a six track EP called Trina. T-R-Y-N-A. Now, instantly I disliked it because of the spelling. But once I put myself past that and listened, this is fucking great. Um, kind of synth punk weirdness. Very good lyrics. Uh, just, yeah, really good little package. Reminded me a little bit of an American band, The Causely Way. I'm sure they get Devo and Poly6 comparisons as well. Um, this one's on Team Glasses, who seem to be putting out some really good stuff out of Brisbane. These guys are also out of Brisbane. Um, from what I can tell, it's mostly a female lineup. Um, and really enjoyable. One of the songs in the middle slows down a little bit and didn't work as well, but when they're kind of up tempo, it's really good, bizarre, fun, goodness. Um, worth checking out. I'm going to give this one four Vivo Energy Domes out of five. Can't even try to. Five of the six tracks are really, really good. And the one I didn't really dig as much was still pretty good. Um, if you like weirdness, if you like synth punk, this is good fun. I'd like to see these guys live too, so once this COVID shit's done, hopefully they'll come down this way. Um, not your run-of-the-mill punk record, well worth checking out. Trying to, can't even. Next one is the single Bug by Void which are an all-female punk band out of Brisbane, uh, or Queensland anyway. Um, I'm a big fan of this particular band. Uh, I've seen them live at Thrashville a little while back and really, really thought they were great. I've been following them since. Most of the stuff they release is really, really spot on. Um, this one is a good song. Remind me a bit of Babes in Toyland for some reason, which is a really not a bad thing because they were a great fucking band. Um, this one's a bit weird in that 
I don't like it as much as some of their other stuff. It's still good, but I don't feel like it's the best representation of what they're capable of. Um, the chorus just kind of irritates me because the verses start building up towards the end. You feel like something big's going to happen, and then the uh, verse just kind of peters out. Um, but that being said, it's a good release. Um, I'm going to give this one three and a half cockroaches out of five. If it was any other band, I'd probably give it a four, but because I know what this band is capable of when they're at their best, I'm only going to give it a three and a half. Yes, I know I'm a cunt. Whatevs, right? Bug by Void. Another band that spells their name all fucked up. V-O-I-I-D. But that's okay. It's a fucking great song. If the chorus was a bit more up, I'd probably like it more. Uh, three and a half cockroaches out of five for Bug. But Void are a great live act. Check them out. Void with Bug. Next is a band called Last Dig Academy with an EP called Neat. Now, don't let that name put you off. That name makes it sound like it's going to be some whiny shit music. But this is actually, um, it surprised me a lot. Um, the first song is a brilliant song called Big Shot. I really liked it. Very, very catchy. The rest of the EP, not quite as good as the first song, but still good. Um, the thing I liked about these guys is they're still, they're a poppy, they're pop punk, indie punk band, but they managed to write catchy, poppy songs with nice hooks that get stuck in your mind without being lame, without being weak, without being cheesy, without fake American accents. Um, there's a bit of body jar in these guys actually, uh, which is not a bad thing. I generally don't dig a lot of the poppier side of, the, of punk, but this, particularly this, the title track, just gets stuck in your head. Um, really wish that all those pricks that start pop punk bands would give this a listen, because you can write catchy hooks and not sound whiny and not sound like you come from California when you've never been further than fucking Marrickville. Um, so yeah, an enjoyable little EP. The, so the first song is by a long way the best. Um, the other songs are good. I give the EP three and a half pop punk pricks out of five. But the first song is particularly good. I give that one a four. Um, but yeah, not a bad band. I'd like to see them live, see how that translates. But the um, very catchy. Uh, nice vocals, check them out, Last Dig Academy, the EP's called Neat, it's pretty neat, not bad, not bad. Right, up next is a band called Linear, not sure where they're from and frankly don't want to know, because I'm not going there, wherever this comes from I'm not interested. Uh, the song's called Ruins, it actually started off really promising kind of a nice little intro and then some group vocals and I thought oh, okay this might go somewhere and then the vocals kicked in for the verse and just didn't do it for me at all it was like being punched in the balls unexpectedly um, yeah just um, not for me at all which is a shame because the group vocal was all right um, the drummer's very good, I'll say that for them. Mind you, the drummer's the only one in the band that looks like he could beat me up, so that's probably why I'm saying that. Um, but there's a lot of bands doing this kind of stuff right now, the whole loud, quiet, loud thing, um, which works for some, doesn't work for others. I didn't dig this at all. Uh, every time it felt like it was going to get promising, then the whiny bit would kick in, and it just seemed like some pretty whiny rich kid complaining about fuck knows what because I couldn't be bothered trying to listen. Um, this is not good. There's elements of what could be a good band in there, um, but this you, you knew what was going to happen before it happened. It was very predictable. You knew when it was going to get loud, when it was going to get quiet, where the vocals were going to go. Um, and yeah, maybe it seemed like a good idea at the time, but um, yeah, I'm going to give this three soft cock pretty boys out of five. Linear, 
ruins. Um, yeah, ditch the whininess and you might be alright, but yeah, not yeah, not a thing for me. Ruins, linear. <laughs> Next up is Crash and the Crappenters, um, and a self-titled album. Another one of these bands where they get lazy and self-title it. Um, it's quite a long album, 38 odd minutes long or something. Um, they're a band which I've heard a lot about, but I've not actually heard them before. I've seen the name all over the place. Hate the name, by the way, but I've seen the name all over the place and it seems to have gone under the radar. Um, it's quite a good album though. Um, 14 tracks and they really vary. There's some kind of mid-tempo stuff. There's some faster punk rock stuff. There's a couple of songs which have elements of ska in them. Um, one that's just straight out ska, which surprisingly I didn't completely hate. But the big surprise, towards the end of the song called Capable, um, came out of the blue. Very, almost Beatlesque. Imagine if Oasis weren't shit and they played, played punk. And this was it. Um, I did like a lot about this album actually. The faster songs are definitely the best songs on the album. Um, the vocals are good. They sound like they're Australian. They're not pretending to be anyone else. The guitarist plays some really good leads throughout this as well. Um, so yeah, Crashing the Crappenters. Terrible name, but not a bad band. I feel like this would be a better band live. Um, recording quality is pretty good. It does kind of lose it for me sometimes with the scar and, and whatnot. There's one song that has a dub intro and the singer kind of sounds like he's trying to rap over the, the intro and that really is a bit cringeworthy. But apart from that, it's pretty good. Um, I'm going to give it three and a half dead musicians out of five. Crash and the Crappenters self-titled album. Not too bad at all. Highlight is that guitarist, he can really shred. Alright, last up, I'm so sorry for this, is um, I Was Only 19, of course, the Red Gum cover by the Knoll Brothers. Now, if that name sounds familiar, it's because Shannon Knoll is the vocalist. Um, some ideas seem good when you have them, and then when the execution is done, it's just shit, and this is one of those things. Um, his, vo his voice, it's like he's been sucking on helium or dicks or something. He's certainly sucking on something because this is fucking awful. Um, he's turned it into kind of a pop punk, skate punk tune. The music sounds like if you grabbed a bunch of high school kids and said, turn this into a punk song, off you go, come back in 10 minutes. This is kind of what you'd get. Just no need. Um, it's a classic song. A lot of other bands have had a crack at it, done it pretty well. There's just nothing that this has brought to it. The vocals are awful. The the riff is just very basic, stripped down pop punk. The drummer seems to know one beat. Um, his voice just fucking shit um, and I hope he sees this but I'm kind of worried he'll threaten to fuck my mum because that seems to be what Shannon Noel does when you say nasty things to him he tells he's gonna fuck your mum um, so <laughs> good luck mum um, yeah this is awful it's bad whoever thought this was a good idea is bad the video clip is bad uh, it's obviously been done because of isolation it's got three of them kind of cutting between the three. My favourite part of the video is the fact you can see the guy's finger at the bottom of the camera when he's filming the drummer at one point. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe this guy owes people money. Maybe it was a bet gone wrong. I can't think of any other reasons why you would actually record this. No. Go back to obscurity, Shannon Noel, because this is fucking awful. You should be ashamed of yourself. Um, yeah, no 
thank you. Uh, I'm gonna give this two shit fucking reality TV stingers out of five. Just fucking dreadful. Uh, whoever, look, the record company that said, yes, let's put this out, hang your fucking heads in shame as well because this is dreadful. Um, yeah. Fuck off. Fuck you, Shannon Noll. Um, and fuck your brothers too because they're in, in the... They're in, involved in this, and they're just as bad as you for saying, Yeah, Shannon, this is great. Oh. Get fucked. Uh, I'd imagine the only time where this would be worth watching is when it comes on late at night at the local RSL and all the fucking nasty, cracked out, fucking bogan chicks come up to the front and try and headbang the show that they can rock and roll. Fucking dreadful. Stop it. Anyway, that's it for another fucking episode. Um, as usual, keep sending me stuff. I'm getting loads of stuff, so I'm never going to get to do it all. Uh, but please, please, please keep sending stuff in. Particularly, if you've got it, send me in the shit. There's loads of good stuff coming in. Send me in more dreadful stuff like Shannon Knoll so I can infect everyone else with it. Anyway, that's it for me. Fuck off.